It's going to be talking about the um, the uh, the third in our series, and that is the the law of belief, the law of belief. And the reason I chose to speak on the seven laws of success is uh, mental laws of su success is because I believe that everything starts in the mind, including our success. It all starts with the way we think. It just doesn't happen. It just doesn't fall in our laps. It's not because of our horoscope or anything like that. Success is the result of actions, and actions are the results of our thoughts. And the better that we think, the better that our lives will be. And tonight I'm going to be discussing the third uh, installment in our series of seven, and that is the, the law of belief. Now, the law of belief is a foundational law of all faiths, all religions, all metaphysics, all are founded on the law of belief. Another way to state this law is in the context of having faith. Now, some people say, well, I don't ascribe to religion, I don't ascribe to God or anything. But believe it or not, we all exercise faith in something. We will demonstrate faith, whether it be God or whether it be in a belief system, whether it be in uh, people. We do demonstrate an element of faith. It's all part of who we are. Now, all the religions of the world talk about one's ability to always keep the faith as being a key to happiness and success. Whether you ascribe to religious dogma or not, the law of belief is something which can either help you achieve success or keep you from achieving success. You will live the law of belief one way or the other. You're going to live it. You're either going to live success or you're going to live failure based upon the way that you believe. Now, what brings us, uh, what are beliefs? What are beliefs? Now, Beliefs are, a, are built upon a mix of fact and fictitious perspectives we have about life, about ourselves, and about our others. Our beliefs form our world. Our beliefs are built upon prejudice. We, when we prejudge something, we are ineffectively reaching premature conclusions about the events and circumstances that are directing our attention. In many instances, we, we reach conclusions despite evidence to the contrary, or despite our best efforts to make logical sense of the situation at hand. So it's not so much what we see, but what we believe we see that influences us and brings us to, uh, to make a determination or a judgment call. Now, beliefs are in essence a, a, a uh, filters of reality and experience. They filter out our sensory uh, perspective, uh, anything that doesn't simply align with our psychological pro programming. And consequently, we don't see it as it is, but rather how we perceive it to be. Now, it doesn't matter. Uh, I don't know if you've ever talked to somebody or not, and uh, you may have had all this uh, statistical information, empirical evidence to support your view uh, about a particular subject. But if that person you're talking to does not believe the things that you're saying, it doesn't matter how much evidence you have, doesn't matter how much proof you have, if they've already got it in their head that it's a particular way, that's the way it's going to be. Generally, what happens at that point is that individual begin to lob into personal attacks on you because uh, they feel that their belief system is being threatened. So we don't see things as they actually are a lot of times, but we see things how we perceive them to be. Have you ever heard this, this, the statement that there's no such thing as reality, only perceived reality? It's like if you were out on the street corner tonight and there was uh, four people standing there and they w witnessed a car accident, four people can give you four completely different stories of what happened. I've, I've seen this myself and even been a part of this myself. I was coming home one night with my family and uh, we lived in Louisiana at that time and we were uh, down a long stretch of highway and right at the edge of town there was a, a, a traffic light at, at, at around 10 or 11 o'clock. The, the light just began to flash yellow because there was no traffic. Well, somebody had uh, ran that uh, the, the flashing red and just turned right out into the oncoming traffic, and there was a huge accident. But the way they saw it was that the, the other car didn't slow down from them, and the way I saw it was that this guy just shot out there and smacked into the other car. So there was three of us there with conflicting stories of what actually took place that night. It was all based upon the way we saw the accident. Now... Beliefs are nothing more than interpretations of events, circumstances, and life experience. Our emotional state, frame of mind, social conditions, and other factors all affect how we will interpret the events and circumstances of our lives. 
I mean, if I'm brought up in a very bad environment and uh, uh, abusive environment or a negative environment, I'm going to interpret my life according to that. I'm going to interpret all the circumstances of life that way. That's why some people believe that everyone is against them and everything's stacked against them because that's the way they perceive it. For instance, if we're to experience an emotional breakdown while certain events and circumstances took place around us, then our beliefs of those events and circumstances would be very different than if we were to be in a positive frame of mind at that time. I mean, think about it. When something goes bad or something happens and you're in a positive state, uh, it doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal. You interpret it according to the way you feel. But if something happens and you happen to be upset or agitated, then the, your emotions will influence the way you interpret the cir circumstances and the situations that are taking place around you. Now, beliefs determine how we believe or how we behave on a daily basis. We will act in a manner that is consistent with the beliefs we hold of ourselves, our others, and events, and the world around us. These are programmed responses and reactions that we have conditioned ourselves to accept without question. The way we interpret the world, the way we interpret people, the way we interact with people, the way we speak and act and conduct business is all pre-programmed into us based upon our beliefs. So understand, our beliefs are our reality. The way we see things is the way that we believe things are. That We will interpret events based upon our perceptions. Our beliefs do become reality. Your intensely held beliefs will become your reality. You will always act, behave, speak, and interact with others in a manner that is consistent to what you believe. Your beliefs will determine your actions and your actions will determine your results. It doesn't matter if you really want to do something or be something different. If your beliefs haven't changed, if you have negative beliefs or self-limiting beliefs, then that is going to affect the outcome. You will live in a way that is consistent to what you believe about yourself. Have you ever heard somebody say, I'll believe it when I see it? I'll believe it when I see it. Perhaps you've even said that yourself. I'll believe it when I see it. The truth is the opposite. It is not until you believe it that you will see it, no matter what the it is. The way you believe it is the way you will see it. We do not believe what we see, but rather we see what we have already decided to believe. And unless we wholeheartedly believe that something can become a part of our reality, then it will remain out of our reach no matter how desperately we may want it. Doesn't matter how hard I want it, no matter how bad doesn't matter how bad I want it. If I don't believe it, if I don't believe it on the inside, it's never going to happen. Life does not give us what we want, but rather what we believe intently, whether we are consciously or unconsciously aware of it. Think about that. Life doesn't give us what we want. Life will give us what we believe life will give us. We get out of life what we believe we will get out of life. Now, I don't know if you're uh, familiar with the term self-limiting beliefs. Now, self-limiting beliefs are the worst of all the beliefs. They're self-limiting beliefs, and these are based upon uh, these are not based upon facts, but they're based on the premises that you have accepted about yourself and your potential that are not true. Self-limiting beliefs are simply beliefs that you have about yourself, others, circumstances, and the world around you that limit your life in some way. Have you ever seen somebody that always seemed to undermine their success no matter what they did, no matter how good everything was going in their life, inevitably they're going to do something that's going to undermine that success. It's because of self-limiting beliefs. Self-limiting beliefs make up the fundamental flaws of our psychology. They limit our opportunities, influence our behavior and actions in so many ways at an unconscious level of awareness that it is frightening to think about the possible long-term impact they have upon our li lives. Self-limiting beliefs will undermine your ability to grow as a, as a psychologically healthy human being. They paralyze your ability to think effectively, to make sense, uh, sensible decisions, and to take proactive actions. They will hinder you. They will cripple you. They will shackle you to a life that you despise. 
If you find yourself fighting through procrastination, stress, worry, anxiety, or fear, these are signs that your self-limiting beliefs are dictating your life's reality and your ultimate destiny. Your, you, you, your self-limiting beliefs <clears throat> will hold you back from living the life you desire to experience and will dramatically limit your potential for success. Your self-limiting beliefs will consistently encourage the development of fear, self-doubt, and will lead to emotional sabotage. Many people will live their entire lives being held by, by accepting these self-limiting beliefs. I mean, have you ever heard the story about the, uh, the, uh, the eagle that, uh, the eagle egg that ended up with a, with a bunch of uh, chickens? And uh, he was hatched by chickens, he was raised by chickens, and all around him he's surrounded by chickens. So he develops the mindset that he is a chicken. Now, reality was he was an eagle. He had the ability to soar. He had the ability to fly hundreds of thousands of feet into the, into the air. And yet he was limited because, by his belief that he was a chicken. So he lived out his entire existence as a chicken because he believed that's who he was. This is what self-limiting beliefs will do to every one of us. They will limit us. They will keep us from our, achieving our potential. They will uh, limit us from uh, achieving our goals and the success and the destiny that I believe that we were all created to have. Many people will live their whole lives being held back by accepting these self-limiting beliefs. Now, self-limiting beliefs are perhaps the most detrimental of all thoughts since they will absolutely keep you from the success you want, but don't believe that you can attain it. That's why people fail to achieve success, is because they actually do not believe that they can be successful people. This is why some people will always undermine themselves because they believe that they are meant to fail. Now, I, I was listening to a, a series by Brian Tracy on the psychology of uh, achievement, and he, he told the story of a multimillionaire, of uh, how he uh, made the decision to change his life. Now, this multimillionaire was born into a blue-collar family. He was told by his father every day that uh, their family were working people, they were working class people, that they never went far in life, they never achieved much in life, that they were uh, blue collar, that they would be laborers, that they would work hard all their lives, and that's that was their fate. This is what they've always done, and this is how their family would always be. So this uh, young man buys into this mentality, and he goes through high school with very little effort and doesn't really apply himself, and right out of high school, he gets his very first job, and his very first job is is as a laborer because that's what he was programmed to believe, that I'm programmed, I'm a, uh, that's who I am, I'm a laborer. It's been in my family for generations. We work with our hands, we're blue-collar people, and we don't, we don't achieve much out of life. So he's standing there one day, and he's digging a ditch along the side of the road, and uh, we're standing there with a, a work crew on the highway, and the traffic's backed up and slowing down, and well, cars are passing him, and he notices that this car pulls up alongside of him, and in this car is a, is, a, is a man that he went to high school with just a few years back. And he remembers this that, that this man was not particularly bright. He wasn't an outstanding student, and he wasn't, uh, didn't, he wasn't voted most likely to succeed. But here this guy was in a brand new car. He was well-dressed. And so he talked to him because he recognized me. He said, hey, Bill. Hey, Ted. How you doing? He said, well, you know, everything in my life's going good. I'm, I've got this new car. I've got this brand new, brand new job. I'm married. We're buying this brand new house. And things in my life are going good. I'm making more money than I've ever made before. And things are just, just wonderful. And uh, as he drives off, it, it occurs to this man holding the shovel that he had been sold a bill of goods by his father. He had been sold a bill of goods. And right there, he made a determination. He threw that shovel down, said, I'm never going to do this again. I'm going to do what that guy does. And within a few years, that man was a millionaire because he had to change his beliefs. He had, he had self-limiting beliefs that kept him bound to a shovel. And when he came to the realization that he did not have to work with his hands for the rest of his life, that he didn't have to dig ditches for the rest of his life, it changed him. And he saw for the first time what he could be, and he stepped out and he achieved it. But he had to change, get rid of those self-limiting beliefs. As I mentioned earlier, 
I I, uh, I lived in rural Louisiana for a number of years. I pastored a church in uh, just outside of Alexandria, Louisiana, in Rapids Parish. Now Rapids Parish has probably got sixty thousand people parish wide. I mean, they call parishes parishes are basically counties. They call them parishes there in Louisiana. We had sixty thousand people in the entire parish. I mean, there's more people in Palm Bay, Florida, than there were in in, in uh, Rapids Parish where we lived. And I lived in a little community called Woodworth, about. 1,200 people in our community, and everybody knew everybody, and uh, area surrounded by national forest and state forest, I mean, miles and miles, you've never seen so many pine trees in your life, just pine trees and uh, red clay roads everywhere, and so everybody there is basically outdoors people, they hunt, they fish, uh, they have four-wheel drive pickup trucks, they have four-wheelers, everybody's got a gun rack in the back and a dog in the back of the truck. This is the kind of community we lived in. I passed there for 12 years. And not far from us, even further out. Now, we were closer to civilization than this other town was. There was this town called Turkey Creek. Now, Turkey Creek is out in the middle of nowhere. But they had this little uh, restaurant there that my wife and I liked to frequent. And so we would drive there periodically for the, the seafood at this, this, at this particular restaurant. And many times while we were driving to this community, we would see a man riding a four-wheeler alongside the road which was not uncommon. I mean, everybody in this area just about has a four-wheeler, has access to a four-wheeler. But what made this young man different was he's driving a four-wheeler with his feet. He was driving a four-wheeler with his feet because this young man was born without any arms. And not only did he drive a four-wheeler with his feet, he also drove a pickup truck with his feet. Not only did he drive a four-wheeler with his, his feet and drive a pickup truck with his feet, but this guy could walk up a deer stand with his feet un, and unshoulder his .30-06, and he could literally fire his weapon with his feet. This guy could hunt deer. He was a deer hunter, and he used his feet to hunt. He could shoot a gun with his feet. Now, you talk about somebody that was not a going to allow their circumstances to limit them, them, and this was this young man. He could do it. I mean, he, he didn't let his, his handicap stop him. Now, it would have been easy for people to say, my life's screwed up, my life's this way, my life's that way, look at me, poor pitiful me. But he had the belief that he could do whatever he chose to do, and it impacted his life. So what can you do? The, the law of belief, when understood in practice, can help you to manifest those things in your life that you truly want. However, you must have absolute clarity on your objectives. You must have a solid plan to get there, and then you must believe that you are destined to achieve them. You must continually reinforce this belief in your own mind. By maintaining faith, by continuing to live in accordance with the law of belief, we are able to achieve our goals. You must persevere. Obstacles will come, but see them as growing opportunities, not setbacks. In life, understand this, in life there is no failure, only feedback. These experiences that we all go through will make us stronger. Now here are two a uh, action exercises which can put in place, which you can put in place immediately to help you in this area. Number one, believe today that you're destined to be successful in whatever areas you desire. Do that. Believe today that you are destined to to be successful in whatever areas you desire. Get focused and clear on your true desires. Make plans to achieve them and then believe with absolute conviction that you will achieve them. Successful people live their lives with the mindset of success. They don't figure failure into the equation. Failure is not an option. Start thinking that way. Act out as if you're, you're destined to win. Act out and live your life and work your plan as if it cannot fail. Remove failure from the equation completely. Number two, get into the habit of acting as though you have already accomplished your goals and are the success that you want to be. Get into the habit of acting as though you have already accomplished your goals and, uh, and you are the success that you want to be. Your new behaviors will influence your belief which will in turn manifest your desires before you. Success is available to anyone, but we must believe that we can have it. If we believe it, we will see it. 